Hello and welcome back to JPP Japan's Perfect Pens. My name is Richard and today will be another Namiki review video. This time we are going back to the Namiki Emperor series and today's pen is the Namiki Emperor Kailin by Masaru and this pen is a 2017 pen. Now the Kailin is a famous mythical beast in Japan and elsewhere in East Asia and we'll talk quite a lot more about what type of beast because it's really quite complicated but for starters here is the pen itself this is a rounded cap Namiki Emperor which means it's an ebonite eyedropper pen 17 centimeters long it's huge there is a bit of macchia on the clip and it sports the two-tone size 50 18 karat gold nib it's also as you can see quite a busy pen there's a lot going on there's very little of the pen surface that isn't covered so there's a lot to talk about in today's video now the macchia technique is tokodashi taka macchia which is what Masaru uses in all of his emperor pens this is burnished raised macchia as we've said before there's 30 stages of production just to get to a black pen then layer upon layer upon layer of macchia on top of it to build up parts of the pen to make it 3d in profile so if we take a look around the pen here is the kylin itself and it has a variety of colors a variety of different features and parts of its body are come from different animals and there's a lot of discussion over what constitutes the kylin itself there's a lot of variation so i'll talk through in a bit about which features this one has now on the cap you can see the green bamboo leaves and then there's also these other gold leaves and the flowers i have read that this is supposed to be paulonia but while the flowers look paulonia like the leaves don't at all and they look more like a japanese older so i'm actually quite interested to know what they are because i can't quite reconcile that discrepancy and i have asked some japanese plant experts already so if i get more information on that i will relate it back into the video what they are is beautifully rendered i mean these are beautifully done raised macchia you can see them reflecting as i rotate the pen here you can see a little bit of gold macchia on the clip there just to seamlessly um, combine it with the cap of the pen and as we go around here as i mentioned earlier there's very little on this pen that hasn't got some work over the top of it which means there's a very important balancing act in not making it too busy and you can see here that some of the bamboo is deliberately put further back fainter so it still retains this form and shape but it doesn't overpower it doesn't distract your eye too much it gives a sense of you know there's multiple layers of these leaves further back which is very nicely done but kind of as you'd expect for a pen at this level so now let's take a look at the bottom of the pen and first let's just describe what's there so you start with the kylin's head now traditionally you would be looking at a dragon head maybe with a wolf's forehead and some form of antlers and then you get a colorful chest and a fish theme so these scales these beautiful blue scales and then moving through you have horses hooves and then at the back you have a tail sometimes it's a bear tail sometimes it's an ox tail so these are the themes on this particular kylin and the strongest theme is the blue scales and you, know, you see this beautifully done very traditional style tail with these lovely swirls which is very nice and there is Masaru's signature on the left and the Kokokai signature on the right but again every bit of this pen even at the bottom here there's some detail there's some form there's a huge amount of work in this pen so even amongst emperor standards I think this has got to be one of the more intensive pens to make because there's something everywhere you look and as we've said before some of these pens enter the 80 different layers 90 different layers this has got to be one of the ones which is seriously high in terms of the amount of manual work required to put in all of this detail especially as many of the parts they have to return to and apply multiple coats multiple layers to build them up so let's unscrew the pen here and have a look so here you can see the two-tone 18 karat gold with 
rhodium highlighting Mount Fuji Namiki size 50 nib and some macchier there on the section so that when you hold the pen like this the section blends nicely into the rest of the pen there is the enormous Urishi coated plastic feed on the back of the size 50 nib the threads as with most of the Namikis are kept bare you just get the occasional one where they put detail on the threads themselves so 18 karat gold nib they write smoothly they have a wet flow and they are controlled by the valve so when you open the valve up ink can then get from the barrel into the section and fill that enormous feed and when the valve is closed the pen can only use the ink stored in the feed in the section so eventually will run dry so you open up the valve to effectively switch on the ink flow and you close it off when you've finished using it it is an enormous and beautiful nib and it's absolutely my favorite writing experience given that little bit of bounce that the giant nib provides so I'll just show you it so I have a very large hand this fits very comfortably it's ebonite so it's lighter than it looks it's just very very nice but it isn't such a good fit if your hand isn't so large if you want to know how this writes take a look at my Namiki Emperor fountain pen writing sample and review video where I use three of these pens and I talk through how they write and the main thing I would say is that the nib is so long that your hand is a long way away from the paper meaning you control it in a slightly different way to how you might be controlling pens with much shorter nibs so moving on it is an exceptionally beautifully detailed pen almost any of these photos or videos where I zoom in the detail really stands up to close magnification and if I just put it away here and look at the pen as a whole there's more to it than just the kylin itself even if we go down to the end of the pen here you've got these beautiful bamboo you've got these little bits of earth coming up and down slightly similar to how we've seen on the goldfish review and at the top You've also got all these levels of detail. I've already commented on the bamboo in the background giving some shape and form. So it is a very full pen. Now let's talk about why the Kylin is significant. Now it is sometimes referred to as one of the four sacred beasts. So we saw in the Emperor Shijin review, the Phoenix, the Dragon, the Turtle, and the White Tiger. Sometimes the Kylin is substituted for the White Tiger. So it's very significant. It's a good omen and it speaks to prosperity and serenity and warding off evil and devils. The beast itself is supposed to be a herbivore that harms no living thing and, and is gentle but is also fierce against evil. And it appears where there's a wise or sort of benevolent ruler or owner. And it's a very popular theme in metalwork, especially amongst Japanese swords because of the theme of protecting against evil and standing for good so it's a highly significant bit of symbolism and therefore it's a popular design because it's a good luck pen that wards off bad things so i hope that helps you understand why this creature is sitting here on an emperor macchie pen now taking a step back from the meanings of the pen it's a very interesting design. If you look at it right now, there's a lot of gold on this. There's gold powder at the top, there's gold powder at the bottom, there's gold powder at the section. There's these golden leaves at the top, which look a little bit like older leaves. There's gold on the Kylin's mane. There's gold on the Kylin's tail. There's gold everywhere. And it's counterbalanced by some green elements on the bamboo leaves and by the purple flowers on the cap. And then on the Kylin itself, you have the blue scales with some green scales and a little bit of the red flames at the bottom. So largely gold pen allows the other colors to be there, reasonably balanced across the pen without looking extraordinarily out of place. So as with most of these pens, there's a very fine balancing act taking place and it's all very deliberate. If you look in detail, even the Kylin scales have slight elements of gold to them just to allow them to blend better with the pen. So it's another masterpiece of combining elements and themes to make them look like an attractive pen. So I hope you found that interesting. It's a bit different. 
And if you did like it, then please like and subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to creating more content like this and seeing you next time. Thank you very much and bye bye.